Did the Soviets just swipe Nazi tech to build their legendary RPG-7? I mean, come on, this tank-busting tube has smoked more armor than a barbecue pit at a tank rally, and it's got German DNA all over it. From the Panzerfaust one-shot chaos to the Panzer Shrek's reloadable rage, the RPG-7 is like the Soviets stole the recipe and added vodka. Is this a Cold War psyop or pure genius? Let's dig into the connections, because history's a thief, and Moscow is holding the bag. All right, let's roll back to World War II because the RPG, seven stories, starts in the rubble of 44. The Red Army's steamrolling west, snatching every German gadget they can carry. Tanks are everywhere. Sherman's T, 34 seconds. Panthers slugging it out like a bar fight gone wrong. The Germans, desperate, had two aces. The Panzerfaust, a cheap tube you could toss to anyone with a pulse and say, go get that tank. And the Panzerschreck, a beefier rocket launcher you could reload for round two. The Soviets weren't shy about looting. They grabbed Panzerschrecks by the crate, basically German-upgraded bazookas from the Americans' Operation Torch in 42. Back in Moscow, their engineers tore them apart like kids with a new toy, thinking, we can top this. By 1949, they rolled out the RPG-1, a clunky first-try short-range, finicky rockets, backblast, that would singe your hat, not great. So, by 54, they cooked up the RPG-2, mixing the Panzerfaust no-kick booster with the Panzerschreck's reusable tube, plus Soviet tweaks like better sights. It saw blood in Hungary 56, shredding barricades. Then, with the Cold War cranking Berlin crisis, nuclear jitters, they went all in. Enter the RPG-7 inches 1,961, designed by a guy literally named Bozhook. Talk about destiny. Over 40 million made cheap as dirt and tough enough to survive a desert or jungle. I snagged a demilled RPG manual at a flea market once smelled like old paper and bad decisions. The pages screamed German influence, warhead shapes from the Faust, tube design from the Shrek. But the Soviets turned it into a weapon that's still kicking today. It wasn't just about copying. They studied how the Germans used these in the field, ambushes in the Ardennes, street fights in Berlin, and built something that could handle the rough stuff like partisan warfare or mountain skirmishes. The RPG-2 even popped up in Algeria's independence war, where French troops learned the hard way that a simple tube could flip the script on colonial firepower. By the time the RPG-7 hit, it was ready for prime time, blending that captured know-how with Soviet mass production. Factories in places like Tula churned them out, like tractors making sure every infantryman from Hanoi to Havana had one in hand. Let's get nerdy with the RPG-7, because this thing's a beast with a brain. Picture a tube 950 millimeters long, weighing just 7 kilograms empty like carrying a broomstick with serious attitude. It fires the PG-7 Volts rocket, a shaped charge monster that melts 330 millimeters of armor at 200 meters. Want to hit a bunker or a truck? Stretch that range to 500 meters. Modern versions with tandem warheads laugh at reactive armor like it's a bad joke. Loading this thing feels like wrestling a bear, but at least I'm not toast. How's it stack up against its German roots? The Panzerfaust was a one-trick pony, recoilless, no rocket motor, just a booster charge. Point, step on the pedal trigger, and it flies 30 to 60 meters max. No backblast to roast you, perfect for popping out of a Berlin ruin in 45. But you had to get close enough to smell the tank's exhaust. They turned out 6 million dirt cheap at 20 Reichsmarks, often by forced labor at places like Hugo Schneider AG. It was brilliant for urban chaos, thinks Stalingrad where a single shot from a window could turn a panther into scrap but worthless beyond spitting distance. Panzerschreck? Closer cousin. A true rocket launcher with an 88 millimeters warhead, punching 210 millimeters at 150 meters. Reloadable, two-man job, but early ones burned operators without the blast shield. Imagine firing and turning your buddy into a campfire story. The RPG-7 learned from that. Its Venturi setup keeps the back blast safe, and flip-up optical sights make aiming feel like you're not guessing lighter than the Shrek's 9 kilogram slog. Reloads take 5 to 10 seconds. Just pop in a rocket and go. Cost? Under $2,000 today versus the Shrek's wartime small fortune. The Soviets went wild with versatility. Anti-tank, anti-personnel, even thermobaric rounds for caves. Panzerfaust? One shot, one job. Panzer Shrek? Mostly tanks, limited tricks. Accuracy's better too. RPGs, fins, and boosters shrug off wind unlike the Shrek's wobbly shots. Downsides? That backblast torches 20 meters behind, so don't fire near your squad. And in dust or mud, the tube clogs, just like the Shrek in snow. The RPG-7's warhead evolved too early. Ones mirrored the Faust's hollow charge, but Soviets added piezo fuses for better detonation on sloped armor, something the Germans struggled with late war. Reliability? Drop it in a river, shake it off, and it still fires. Try that with a finicky Shrek. Production scaled up massively, while the Germans scraped by with 289,000 Shreks amid bombings. 
Soviet factories like those in Kovrov spat out millions without breaking a sweat. It's why the RPG-7 became a staple in asymmetric wars light enough for guerrillas, deadly enough for regulars. How'd this Soviet Frankenstein fare in a fight? It debuted in Vietnam 65, where Viet Cong squads turned Hueys and APCs into scrap over 300 U.S. vehicles smoked. By the Six-Day War, 67, Arab forces with RPG, 2S bloodied Israeli centurions. Afghanistan 79, Mujahideen made Soviet convoys cry, flipping BTRs from hillsides. Tactics leaned on mobility, pairs 50 meters apart, popping shots from cover, reloading fast. Unlike the Panzerfausts run at the tank vibe, you could stay hidden. The Shrek used similar plays in Normandy, but the RPG's range gave you breathing room. Here's a wild one. In Vietnam 68, an RPG-7 misfire torched a friendly truck talk about a bad day. And in the Yom Kippur War 73, Egyptian gunners bagged 800 Israeli tanks, 20% of their fleet, with RPGs. Biggest shocker? Gulf War 91, one RPG, seven rounds slipped through an Abram side armor the first time that beast went down. Over 9 million kills claimed tanks, choppers, bunkers from Chechnya to Ukraine. The Germans sparked the idea, but the Soviets made it a legend. In Somalia 93, a single RPG brought down a Black Hawk, inspiring movies and showing how this stolen tech flipped superpowers on their heads. Or take Syria Today Rebels modding RPGs with drone guidance, evolving that German base into sci-fi territory. I read those Gulf War reports and got goosebumps. Imagine one shot dropping a 70-ton monster. I'd pick the RPG over a Faust any day. That reloads a lifesaver. So there you have it, the RPG-7 stitched together from Nazi scraps like the Panzerfaust and Panzer Shrek turned into the world's deadliest budget weapon. The Soviets swiped German homework, added range and swagger, and made every tank commander sweat. Was it a lazy copy or a Cold War glow up? You tell me. Would you sling an RPG seven inches a fight or stick with the one and done Panzerfaust? Drop your hot takes in the comments. I'm all ears for your gear debates. Oh, and no, this isn't a CIA psyop to make RPGs cool, or is it? Stay curious, keep digging history, and remember, sometimes the best weapons are just stolen ideas with extra kick. Catch you next.